Hey there. Welcome to the channel where you will find love, laughs, and DIYs. My name is Crafty Kathy, and I want to welcome you to my channel. Today, I am upcycling an old armoire. Now, this armoire belonged to my sister that passed away in July, so I want to take good care of it. But I wasn't crazy about the wood color. She had it in storage for so many years. It's really good quality. It's gorgeous. So we are going to upcycle it and make it a little bit more my style. Now, I am no professional by any means, but anytime I put a piece of furniture in my store that I've upcycled, it sells really fast. So I must be doing something right. So I want to teach you what I've learned, the tips and tricks of how I make it easy. I use a squirt bottle. I've got my paint. We're using Latte. It was a fall color of last year's Dixie Belle. Now, I just used a variety of different paint brushes because I wanted to have a good variety to see what I liked. I have two that are like Dixie Bell brushes. They were really nothing special, to be honest with you. They uh, were expensive, and I, that's about all I'm going to say, and a Wooster brush from Lowe's. But I personally believe that what makes the piece is what you do after you paint it. Now, I'm not even going to show you the long process of me painting it. It took me a couple hours to paint it because I put two coats on it and let it dry in between. So, I'm going to show you what I do after the paint is applied. I wanted to jump in here and let you know that I am going to show you parts of me painting, like different parts of it, but I just didn't want to, you know, drag it on and show you, you know, just the painting, because I'm not kidding. I literally just slap that paint on there, let it dry, and give it another coat, but you will see how I do that. Now, like I said, I'm no professional. This is just how I do it to make it very easy for me. And maybe you can learn something from the way I do. Maybe you can teach me something. It doesn't matter. But let's get back into the video. Ooh. After a few hours of working on it, this is what I come up with. I think this looks really good for, honestly, for the way that I paint. Now, I'm not joking, guys. I literally slap the paint on. I don't sit there and I try to be careful around the edges so I don't make big globs like on the corners because I don't like that. But I am the messiest painter you can imagine. I use my fingers and literally blend stuff in. I am not joking by any means. So the places where I had a couple of kind of globby spots, I just go over it with my sander. And I use like a two- 40, very, very light sanding, and I barely touch it. And there's a couple of spots that I like to wear down to the regular wood to get that paint off there, just to give it an old distressed look. And I just kind of do it here or there. There's really no rhyme or reason to what I do. I just, whatever I think looks good, I do it. Because you can always cover it up if you don't like it. You know what I'm saying? So I just go over it and... Like I said, anywhere where there's spots that I don't like, like right there where I'm at now, there was a little bit of like a globby bit of paint. It came right off with that sander, baby. Nothing we can't fix. I take the drawers out. There was two drawers here, and I had already painted the front of them, but I didn't paint the top and the sides, and then I like to paint underneath just the little part that closes there in the very front. And so I wanted it all to look good and cohesive, so I just put two quick little coats on that too. And do you see, this is what I'm talking about, the way I paint. It's just slap, 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 we're done, move on. This is where I'm adding my second coat. And I pay special attention to any areas that are going to be high traffic, like, you know, kids are going to be grabbing at these doors and stuff like that. So I can kind of expect that this area that I'm painting here may need, you know, a little bit, maybe even a third coat. I just gauge it with the paint that I'm using. Now, if I was using the DIY paint, which is my favorite, I could literally get away with doing one coat. But with this Dixie Belle, I ended up doing two and a half. 
This drawer had six knobs on it, and this is what they look like. I like the way they looked, but they just needed to be freshened up. So I took them outside and used my Rust-Oleum Times 2 in a glossy finish. And this is what they looked like when I finished with them. And I absolutely love the way that they turned out. I usually don't like gloss, but it looked really good in this instance. Now we're gonna start adding transfers. You can cover up any ugly with a transfer, honey. I'm just telling you right now. We are using this book Painterly called Florals. Painterly Florals. It's the one that's got the sunflowers in it and the real pretty peonies. And I'm out of the sunflowers, but I love the peonies. That's my favorite flower. I love the way it looks. And I didn't have a lot of the stems left, but you know what? You can make it work. If you have bits and pieces of your transfers left, you can make them work. And they are gorgeous on any furniture. And I honestly believe that this is what sells my pieces so well, is when I put the transfers on it, people just go gaga over it. So I'm putting a couple transfers down and... and you know, I do transfers a lot, but if you don't know, you just lay down the film that it's on and you use a little burnishing tool that they send you and you like rub it with that burnishing tool and then you use the film that it was on to burnish it and that's just kind of rubbing it in, you know, to get it good and stuck on there. There's my first peony that I put on there. And a lot of these transfers, they honestly, you don't even have to rub them sometimes. They just come right off easily. So I'm not going to show you every single transfer that I put on here. My rule of thumb is not to put too much. You want to go crazy and put a bunch of them because they're so pretty. But then if you start putting too many, it becomes kind of tacky, honestly. So I just put them here and there to try to make, you know, a scene out of the ones that I had left. I make sure that the top and the bottom go together and are cohesive, so I put a couple down on the bottom also. And the Painterly Florals also comes with a bunch of lavender pieces in it, little lavender stems. So I thought this is gonna look great. And I'm gonna put these on here to make it look as if they are right beside that one peony and then actually growing up in front of the other one. This is where I'm talking about that I made it look like it was growing all the way in front of that other, that, that taller peony. And I just went all across the front of this side. Now I'm gonna do my darker shading. I go around the perimeter of areas and I'm using the color Mud Puddle, which is the darker shade of that latte. And do you see where the curvature of this is? I want that to be accentuated. So I go around this curvature with that color, and then this is my brush that has absolutely nothing on it except for water, and then I kind of feather it out so it will, you know, just kind of look natural so it doesn't look like I just painted it on there. It actually just blends right in, and I went around all these little squared areas like around the outer rim of them. Here I take one of my wax brushes and I put it in that color mud puddle and that emblem that's on the top, I go all over it and kind of push that paint down inside there. Now I get my wax brushes, I get all of my supplies from Lori at Milton's Daughter and she gives my subscribers 10% off. So if y'all need any of these supplies, you need to go and check out Miss Lori. She doesn't sell the Dixie Bell paint, she does the DIY paint and to be 100% straight up with you, DIY paint is the best paint that I've used. It's a clay-based paint. The only reason that I'm using this Dixie Belle is because I found it for $10. So it half off what it normally is. And I'm just trying to get rid of it at this point. I mean, it's not that it's a bad paint, but compared to DIY, there is no comparison. So here I'm just squirting because I didn't have water out there. So I just wet the brush that has absolutely nothing on it. And here I'm just going around and shading a little bit more and darkening that area up even more. 
I do it in like two stages. I put a little on and wait for it to dry, and then I put another coat on and wait for that to dry. I also shaded those two bottom drawers with that color mud puddle, and here I'm just wetting my brush and going around it to feather it out again. I hope that you can concentrate instead of seeing my huge roll hanging out there. I am so sorry. I just get into what I'm doing and don't realize that I'm, you know, my shirt's jacked up and I'm right in the way. So here I'm just using a little bit of the white wax, and it's DIY, my favorite paint products absolutely by far and so I'm just going to go around those inner corners I go kind of heavy on that very most inner corner and the two side corners I go just a little bit lighter so I can feather it out I do it just like I do all of my my DIY projects I put it on and then I use a rag to wipe it off I absolutely love to blend my paints like for instance i'm talking about i had that color latte which is the brown color and then i had the lighter shade of it which is burlap and the darker shade which is mud puddle so i've got three colors i put the latte on i go in my lighter areas that i want lighter with that lighter color burlap and the darker areas with that mud puddle now if you'll notice those two areas at the top the indentions there where the peonies are right above where i'm at look how dark they are it just gives it character and it makes it stick out and then that emblem at the top it does now you don't have to do this to your furniture by any means you can slap your paint on and be done with it but i just think that this is an extra step that's worth taking for me because my sales are great when i do it this way and people just rave about it but I think the key might be to kind of do it in layers and do it in steps. Now I've got my DIY black wax and I started going on with my wax brush and I was afraid I was going to get outside those lines, but I was really careful and just followed the pattern and then I immediately wiped it off as soon as I put it on there because I didn't want it to get too dark. So I just wiped off the excess with my little lint-free rag. In between all the shading and stuff I do, I just grab a little sponge, a uh, little, you know, sand sponger thing and just kind of go over it very lightly, especially any areas where I was shading where I may have got like that darker color out of those little indentions or whatever. Hey, all you got to do is use that little sanding sponge and just lightly go over it and it just disappears like it was never there. I very lightly did a dry distressing, like a dry brush, over that emblem again with the color mud puddle, just to kind of knock it down a little bit. And right here, I'm going all over the piece with that sanding sponge, and that's all I did. But as you see, I do it in steps and pieces, and I keep adding and taking away until I get it exactly the way I want it. Now, on the outside, this is what we got so far, but I wasn't finished because there was an inner part that I just didn't like. It's that old cheap, flimsy board that they put in the back of these where they used to put a TV inside them. And as you see, it just looks so tacky whenever you open the door, and I don't like that. See how flimsy this is? We don't like that. We've got to change it. Now they put these on with simple staples and this was very easy for my husband just to use a screwdriver here and I think he's got a set of cutters. Just something to pop those staples off of there and the back came right off with no problem. So he had a leftover piece of, some people call it beadboard, some people call it wainscoting or wainscoting, I think I've heard it called both. Um, but it's really pretty and if you just put something like this in the back, it's just one solid piece. It's very easy to just stick on there. And that's what we decided to put on the back. We just measured the back and he cut it down so that it would fit. And then we used an air hose to get all of that dust and debris off of there because that really matters. And then we took my little nailer. This is an awesome nailer for a lady especially. It is a Milwaukee... 23 gauge 
And so it shoots smaller nails too, little pin nails or like tiny little brad nails. It's amazing for my projects. I can put, you know, any type of wood or box together that I need. It's light and carefree and easy to use. So as you can see, we just went all around the edges of this and shot that beadboard so that it would be good and secure and stay on there. And now that that part's done, I painted the top right here where the arm wire is gonna sit, the bigger piece. But first I just took a little sanding sponge and went over that because where I painted it the first time, it was kind of, you know, rough and had like little globby spots on it. And then I always wipe it down with a lint-free rag that I wet and then I totally wring out. That also helps the wood to receive the paint when you have just a slight bit of dampness to the wood. And this is where I'm talking about. Now, I'm probably very unprofessional, but I get the job done and I get it done quick. Now, I'm just using a roller. It doesn't have a thick nap or anything. It's just a simple, small roller. And you saw, saw what I did with that latte color. I literally put some down the middle and I get her on there. And to be honest with you, out of all of the paint brushes that I used, this was my favorite method. Now, I've watched a lot of people on YouTube that do furniture, and they use these little rollers, and now I see why. It also gives the paint a little bit of like a texture, which I like. If you don't like that, by all means, use the, you know, the brushes. But I liked this, and it was so fast. And I beat my husband. He's over here painting the sides, which I didn't really want that part painted. But he decided he liked it better painted, so I said, go for it. It doesn't matter. Now, this is not totally dry, but here's my top. So all we had to do was let the paint finish drying and he put the top on there very carefully so he didn't scratch it. And here is the final result. I'm gonna show you pictures of it with the door closed and with it open so you can see what the beadboard looks like. This is one of my favorite projects that I've ever done. And not just because it was my sister's and I wanna honor it, but just because I love the color that I chose. It's just very, soft and it actually goes with the greenish color that is in my sunroom here and it's a big large size and I can cram all my junk in there and papers that's what I usually use an armoire for it's kind of you know anything that just collects in the front room there but I just think this color is so pretty and look at that beadboard if we wouldn't have put the beadboard in, it still would have been pretty, but that made all the difference. And I'm so glad I decided to leave the beadboard white because it popped. And it just, we were going to paint it the latte color, but at the last minute we said, no, let's leave it white because it just gave it that accent. Thank you guys for watching. And like I said, by no means I'm a professional. This is just how I get it done. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a like. Sabby, did you work hard today? Did you do the arm wire and paint it and work really hard? He said, I'm gonna come around on this side because I can get closer to you. Okay, okay, let me sit right here and watch Dad eat. Goodness gracious. Sabby, did you work hard? Sabby. 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 Did you work hard? He heard that ding and he's like, food? What? Who? Food? Yeah. Sabby.